My name is Mary Lee, and I grew up in a little place in Northern Bay. It's just down from Carboneer, uh, famous for Northern Bay Sands. We never bought any food, that, that type of food. We grew, always grew our own, but we never bought any cabbage or turnip or potatoes. We know there were certain things you had to buy, but that was it. We even had our own eggs because we had our own hens. We had our own milk because we had our cows. Well, we got food. My father was a fisherman, so of course, and we had our fish because he used to catch it in the fall and preserve it, get it ready for in the winter. We would keep that for in the winter time. We grew our own potatoes, our own cabbage, our own turnip. And we had a root cellar, which we, that's where we put all of our vegetables. For the winter, we'd go over to the cellar and when we wanted to, to get a few potatoes, a cabbage or a turnip, we'd go to the cellar and get it. On top of the cellar, of course, my father had a, a shed or a building. Uh, we'd go into the air and then you go down to the cellar. But he had the building up, up on top for his traps because where he was a trap fisherman. In the spring of the year, he would have his traps out and he would mend his traps and so he'd have them ready for when he started his fishing. When it comes to going out and finding things, like the wild berries and that, and at the end of July, you would go where there's marshes for the bake apples. And in September, most any place you go where there's woods, you'd find the blueberries. And then in October, you'd find the Patrick's berries. My father, we, uh, our animals that we reared, we, we always had a horse. We usually had probably about a couple of cows. We'd have maybe about four sheep. Chickens varied, usually be about 12. Hens and rooster, because that's, we just, uh, you know, they, then the hens would have the chickens, and of course you would uh, have the, the hens staying over the chickens, whatever for, you know. So we always had hens and chickens. In the summertime, we used to cut hay, cut the grass. You didn't mow your grass then, you cut it with a scythe, and uh, you, you dried it, you turned it over, and when it'd be almost dry, you'd put it up in pooks, in little things of hay, and then the next day, when it was, if it was rain, you left, left it there, but if it was fine the next day, you went out, you spread it again, and then we had a hay cart, and of course the horse, and we'd put the hay, when it was dry and ready to go in, we'd put it in the hay cart, bring it up to the stable, and then we had a loft up on the stable, and it was the hay loft, and that's where we would put the hay, so that the horses and the cows would have it for the winter. Learning how to grow those things is great, because, you know, we just put it there and watch it grow, and ask me if I like it, and I would have to say no, because I wasn't used to it. But watching other people up at the Brother Jim McSheffrey Community Garden, and they're growing all those things that, you know, I had never heard tell of. Artichokes. I had never heard tell of those things in my life until I started gardening up at the Brother Jim McSheffrey Community Garden. And now I see all those different kinds of vegetables that can be grown and that people are eating, you know. And even like some of the weeds in the garden, they're, they're good to eat. People are bringing them up to me, here, eat those. I'm not eating those weeds. They're good for you. Uh, you know, it wasn't good for me at least. Not, you know, weeds were something that you just threw out of the garden and that was it. But apparently there's, there's a lot of stuff growing in the garden that's good to eat and good for you.